All right, guys, so we're taking a deep dive into the inside zone today, one of the most widely used concepts in all of football. Let's get after it. All right, guys, if this is your first time being at the channel, welcome. This is the American Football Academy. I'm Justin Sadler. I'm an officer coordinator here in Munich, Germany of the GFL One. This channel, the American Football Academy, is dedicated completely to improving the football IQ of players and coaches in the international community. So with all that out of the way, let's get to it. Now, the first thing we're going to start with is always going to be the rules. With whatever concept that you're using, the rules are the most important. You cannot apply the details of the concept if you don't know what the rules are. So what are we going to use? We're going to use the covered uncovered rules, okay, covered uncovered. And, and there's plenty, plenty of different ways you can set this up. I've also seen this with a number system uh, where, where you essentially just count from play side one, two, three, four and five you count play side to back side and then you just block those guys okay i've seen that i've also seen the zero plus one two three minus one two three i've seen that as well okay i like the covered uncover rules i think this this uh is is very easy to teach uh and applicable over you know uh, any offense i think any offense can implement this and, and have a pretty easy time figuring it out so let's get into it uh how do we handle this so we're gonna say from our play side shoulder let's look at the guard here from the play side shoulder to the nose of the man play side. We're running to the right, by the way. So we're gonna say, if anybody's in this space, we are covered, okay? If we say from the play side shoulder to the man, uh, the nose of the man next to us, in this, in this situation, we got two different people here. We've got, our, we've got our guard and we've got our center. And in this case here, our center is gonna be uncovered, our guard is gonna be covered, because he's got somebody. He's got somebody on this play side shoulder to head up. Okay, there's no one from the center. Okay, so it, this becomes a little bit tricky. It's important to, to understand the head up versus the play side shoulder. Okay, got my little Michael Jackson glove on. Every time I am in one of these videos, I get made fun of for having this glove on, but it's, it's, it's fantastic for my drawing board. All right, so we get into this here. Uh, let, let's go down the line and figure out who's gonna be covered, who's gonna be uncovered. We're running to the right again. All right, so we got covered here. We got covered here. Following the same rules, we're uncovered, we're covered, and we're uncovered. So what do you do when you're covered? What do you do when you're covered? You block the defender. So block the defender, block the defender, block the defender. Who's in your play side gap, right? That's gonna be the idea. Now, what happens if you're uncovered? Okay, there's two, two different ways you could do this. You could either help the backside second level defender. That's what I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna teach. Help the backside and climb up to the second level, or you can help play side, okay? If we help play side, we're looking like this. Okay, and this gets a ton of lateral flow, as you can imagine. But if we help backside, we're gonna be we're gonna be in this situation where we help here and we climb, and then the backside tackle has his own rules, really. Uh, and you can kind of teach this however you'd like. I've seen offenses who say, okay, well, we're just gonna zone step, play side, zone step, make sure that this nose doesn't slant in. If he does, we we punch and we we can stay on. Uh, but if because then he's then he's technically in our gap. But if, he, if we end up covering him up, then we're going to step play side and then work up to this backside backer. The other alternative that I've seen is that we step at our defensive end for a step and then we climb up here. If he engages, we can stay on. If he, if he goes more outside, then we'll just, we'll just get here. But if he crosses our face, we'll just stay on this guy. Okay, so that's the way that that could be handled. Very similar in the three-man front as well. All right, now let's change this up here. Let's run to the left. See how, the, how this applies in this situation. So what do, we, what do we got? We're running here. We got covered. We got uncovered, right? Okay, from our play side shoulder to nose, yes, we're covered. We're uncovered here and covered here, okay? So covered, we block man on, boom, 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 boom. And now uncovered, we're gonna help backside, climb it up. Backside, climb it up. Now this is very different. This is very different from this, okay? And I want, you know, it's not that one, one is right or wrong, but it's very different from this when we help play side. Imagine the, the huge push that we'd get here. Uh, there'd be a ton of lateral flow, but this is not an easy block. And also, there's no there's no saying that you have to stick with this the whole time. You could say, you could very well do this, where play side, we want to go here because we think we can handle this nose, but backside, we want to help our backside teammate. Okay, and we'll leave this backside, backside guy on block. There's no, I mean, it's not like you have to stick with one thing or the other. You're the coach, you can do whatever you want. Okay, so if you want to have here, play side, we help play side guy. Backside, we help backside guy. You can very well do that as well. 
All right, now let's talk about some, some of the calls that we could potentially have. Okay, this Uno call here, what happens if this Sam walks down off the edge? How are we gonna handle this situation? Well, by traditional rules, it would be here, 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 up to here, and here, and then he's right off the edge, able to make the tackle on the backfield. We don't want that. Okay, that's, that's no fun for our running backs. So what we can do is we make an Uno call or a plus one, whatever you want to call it. He's going to work over here. He's going to work here. He's going to work here. If it tells everybody to shift over one man. Okay, so then this, instead of climbing up here, we end up with a double team working over to this. Okay, or you could, you know, the, the other solution, again, it's not like there's just one or the other. You could also just say, hey, we're going to stick, we're going to stick on this guy, but when we work up, we're going to work to this backside guy and we'll leave this mic and this defensive end unblocked. That's a way that that can be done. Or if you get an Uno call, you could automatically try and bring a receiver in. Okay, automatically bring a receiver in. So you end up with this situation. Okay, just have a little tag word to bring him in. You work up here, work up here. He takes and high walls this backside defensive end. And now the only guy who's unblocked is going to be this backside will. And then you could do whatever you'd like RPO wise with him. Okay, now we talk about the aiming point for the running back because this is another major uh, major factor in this. Uh, inside, zone, inside zone does not work if you don't have a, a good aiming point. So I like to say if we're going to run to the right side here. I want to run to this right ass cheek of the center. If we're running to the left, I want to run to the left ass cheek of the center. And this will really help you, especially if you're in this, you know, in this situation. Pistol is very easy. You just get your get your uh, shoulders completely square to the line of scrimmage, and you're just running straight downhill. Uh, but if you're if you're in this situation where you're playing from traditional gun, if that aiming point is in here, we can take that J step, and now we're we're good to go. We can keep our shoulders relatively square. If our aiming point is going to be the outside leg of the guard. Think about where those shoulders are going to be. Now, the important thing behind this is that if you do that, okay, if you end up doing that and you come across here and you get these shoulders here, you're going to have to cut sharp in order. You're going to have to make a sharp cut. We want to use speed cuts in the backfield. We want to, we want to be able to accelerate while we, we make our cut and we accelerate from there. I don't want to have to accelerate and then stop, decelerate, and then change directions. Not in the backfield. That's for juke moves down the field. The only time that's ever going to happen in the backfield is if we make a jump cut. But that's not so common that we actually make the jump cut in the backfield. That's why we want to, let's say we're running to the left here. That's why we would say, even if we decide that we want to help play side, that's why we would say we're going to double this. Because we don't want to technically, we don't want to have to go and jump cut we don't want to have to jump cut all the way around him. We'd like to be able to cut in here. That's going to be able to keep our speed higher. All right. So that's essentially going to be the uh, inside zone here from a four-man front. One thing that we can do, we talk about RPOs here. Okay. One, one very easy uh, RPO that most people run is going to be we're going to run inside zone to the right. Stick with our covered on cover rules. We're here and here. Okay. We're working up here. We're going to just run a bubble here. So whoever our force defender is going to be, in this case, maybe he comes down and becomes the force defender. But uh, in this case, essentially, the force defender is going to be the, the next guy inside the corner who is a second level defender. It probably would end up being this safety flying down. OK, but let's see this. Let's say this wheel is a little bit wider and we put him in conflict. Now, he's a force defender in this situation. He's in conflict. He's either going to step in here. OK, and then we could block this guy. Right. And then we end up having this. We end up having this here. We put him in conflict, and now we run our inside zone. We're running to the right, by the way. We just have a nice little cutback that we can take, and we run the bubble, and we just look at this guy. What does he do? Now, we're not reading the defensive end at this point because we're, we're blocking him. Okay, We're going we're gonna to base up this defensive end, but this second-level defender, we can read him, make a decision. Okay? Uh, if you want to read first level defender, that's very easy. You just read him. Everybody else is stepping in. Boom. We take our zone step. We're going to be here. If he crashes, we pull. Okay. And then you still have the triple option. As long as he's behind the line of scrimmage, he doesn't get downfield. Quarterback can pull, run, 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 and throw. Okay. And I've seen that. Uh, it's not the easiest throw to make, but it's a possibility. All right. Now let's take a look at this here from a three man front. Okay. And I want to also give you the fullback. Now, how do, how do you handle the fullback situation? You could very well tell him, like, hey, we're going to, it's going to be automatic split zone. What, what most people refer to as split zone, where if we run to the left, we run to the left, fullback comes across and kicks out backside C-gap defender. If we run to the right, okay, then we would just keep him. Instead of coming across, we'd just keep him here, and he would just high wall this backside defender. Okay, he's gonna, always going to be C-gap. So let, let's work through this one more time here uh, with the covered uncover rules so you have a better understanding of it because now we get to see the nose. That's going to play a little bit of a, a different role here. So we're covered here. We're uncovered here. 
We are uncovered. Okay, uncovered. Now we got two uncovered in a row. It's a funky situation here. Okay, covered, covered, and he's not involved in this covered, uncovered rules. Unless he's on the line of scrimmage, then he will be. Okay, but in this situation, what do we do? We have two uncovered here. All right, well, essentially, what happens if we're uncovered? We're helping our backside teammate. We can't help, we can't have the guard help. So he's going to have a, a kind of a different rule here where we're going to end up blocking it in this way, in this fashion here. He's going to help the backside teammate. That's the backside teammate. We're running to the right. All right, up to second level. Okay, he's going to step and take his play side gap. All right, and then the fullback is going to be responsible for C-gap defender. Most likely, this will be the C-gap defender. Okay, the other thing that you can do is tell him, hey, we're going to run, uh, we're going to just man up this guy, man up this guy. We'll run a, like um, an insert zone, or I call, I call that actually split zone. Okay, and we'll run our normal zone, but we're going to insert the fullback in here on the second level defender, and we'll just keep this guy unblocked. And we can throw whatever we want out here for this for this single receiver. Now we're you know off off we go running the ball. We got those two easy cuts that we can make. Okay, so that's to the right. Now let's take a look at this to the left here. How's this going to play out? All right. So most of the time, if he's a four I. Okay, he's a four I. He's going to be taking the B gap, right? We're not expecting him to loop back outside. So we're expecting the Jack to jump down. So we're here. So in this case, he's going to be uncovered. Okay, uncovered. He's covered. He's uncovered, he's covered, and he is uncovered, okay? The reason he's covered, again, is because play side shoulder to nose. This is head up, so he's covered, right? That's going to be the, that's going to be the rule. So uncovered, we can step and help place uh, our backside teammate. So we're here and here until the jack jumps down, and we got to take the jack. He can step up here, take this guy, and help out, and then we climb up. And then here, you can handle this two different ways. You can either kick out and insert him, or you could have him work in and have him kick out. Either way, you're going to have one guy on the backside unblocked, okay? And then aiming point, everything else stays the same for the for the running backs, and you can run whatever RPOs you want. You've got three receivers. I like to do a lot of, uh, you know, uh, you know, you could do a, a two-side RPO. So in this case, so we're going to run that inside zone to the left here. This is the way that's going to play out. So we're here, we're here. We're going to insert this guy just for fun. And then we can run whatever we want right here where he's going to block. He's going to run a little flat route. See this a ton in the NFL this year. It's crazy big in the NFL. And we got our one-step slant here. And then we're boom right here. Running back's always going to be reading the first man past the line of scrimmage, working backside, okay? So in this case, he's just going to be looking at the nose. So we're either going here or we're cutting back. If we look at the four-man front, we're going to run the ball to the left here. We're going to be looking at the nose, and then we're working. So this is the first read. This is going to be the second read. Okay, we're working. We're working back here. All right, guys. So that's basically it for inside zone. Hopefully, you have something that you can walk away with right now and implement into your offense immediately. Okay, that's that's the goal behind all this thing. Now, if you like this video, please do me a favor and physically like the video. Okay, press the press the button, uh, and then also share this with a coach who you think would absolutely love this channel. All right, I'll see you guys next time.